that is our lockdown book show jingle. Um, uh, Hello! Hi everybody, um, welcome to uh, the lockdown book show with us, the bookshop band, uh, from our home in Scotland, in Wigtown, in the book town of Scotland. Um, I hope you're all doing uh, really well. Um, we have, oh, we're going to come into the mics for talking, um, so we... Uh, Scotland today has slightly relaxed its lockdown um, measures, so you're actually allowed to meet um, another family now, which is quite exciting. So that's probably what everyone is doing. Um, but we like to think that we're meeting you here. So <laughs> There's people there, look. Hello. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> oh, Brian Elliott. Hello, hello Brian. Hello. Um, so we have got uh, a whole host of bookshops, as ever, joining us on this uh, uh, cross posting. Um, so Beth, who do we have in the UK? We have um, our very own Mr B's Emporium of Reading Delights, where we started our life as the bookshop band. We have Daunt Books, Q Bookshop, Sheen Bookshop, The Bookshop here in Wigtown, uh, Wigtown Book Festival, The Open Book, also here in Wigtown, Books in My Bag, Booksellers Association, The Blue House Bookshop and Books on the Hill. And then we have... I really haven't been following the list. Oh, okay. uh, we... move over to the, oh, the yes. UK Atkinson one. Atkinson Price, it's all written over our door, just behind the <laughs> camera. Uh, Atkinson Price, um, Bookends in Carlisle, the Rydale Book Festival, Bath Old Books, hi Richard, uh, St Ives Bookseller, and then in Europe we have the English Bookshop in Uppsala and Stockholm and Schlanagig in Ireland. Hello Elizabeth. Um, and then over in North America? We have Word Bookshop um, in Brooklyn, and, uh, New York and New Jersey. And then we have Tattered Cover in Denver, Bookmark in Canada. Um, then we have Collected Works in Santa Fe and Tidal Wave Books in Albuquerque. Maria's Bookshop in Durango, Sandpiper Books um, California. California, I always forget where that is. We haven't been to the most, most of these we've actually been to, but we haven't been to Sandpiper Books yet, yeah, but I one day. Second Star to the Right in Denver and Bookworks in Albuquerque and Bay Books in Michigan. So hello everybody if you're joining us on any of those channels. And so we're going to play you um, five more book recommendations um, for lockdown reading. And I know lockdown's changing and Beth and I were talking about whether we should because it's changed whether we should carry on and we, we'd like to carry on but if you'd like us to carry on let us know if you'd like us to stop let us know too um but uh we'd like to carry on um it gives us a sense of purpose and the day of the week <laughs> yeah. and we dress up we put perfume on and you know make ourselves feel great and also bookshops can't open yet we're not gonna be able to gig for probably a year um anyway we uh, yeah we're gonna carry on Tell us to stop and we will. If you like. <laughs> I don't think they're going to th no, somehow. No. Well, it's all our family and friends. Yeah. Um, so, but the first book we're going to do is... Drum roll. Oh, I put the drum down. Ah, uh, I've got the bells. Okay. Really ramping up the production values here, everybody. <laughs> um, this is a book called Orphans of the Carnival by Carol Birch. Um, I'll get a bigger version of it. Which is there. <laughs> Like Alice in Wonderland. I know, I can't have to work out which way to that's go That's great, then. that's great. Um, and I think really early on in Mr B's, um, our life at Mr B's, you and Poppy did an event with Carol Birch yeah, about Jam Rack's Menagerie. Menagerie, which was, I still haven't read it, but apparently it was a great book. And um, so I was really excited to read Orphans of the Carnival. And we read it in, must have been the end of the summer 2016 and it's probably one of our last events with Mr B's before we moved to Scotland and we've been on the road quite a lot and the book is very much about being on the road it's about this woman called Julia Pastrana who was um, in real life I think uh, born in Mexico and she she was basically a bit of a freak of nature she had so much hair on her body that she was likened to a, a monkey or gorilla or an ape and she she saw herself basically as being um someone who should go to the circus and she wasn't just it wasn't just her looks that made her kind of an entertainer I suppose she was a very talented dancer and singer and she played guitar and so her whole act 
kind of evolved around this this thing. So she ran away from her home, um, and she was an orphan, but she'd been looked after by um, some other people for a while. And then she went to join the circus, and she um, kind of did really well, but I guess she had to hide herself away quite a lot because in the circus you don't really want to give away what people are paying for by kind of going off out into the public and revealing who you are to, to people. And even when she did, she she kind of got things thrown at her and she was um, called names and it wasn't a very pleasant time for her that way. But she made friends within the circus and she has these dreams of wondering what real life, what a normal life would be like and life not on the road and being able to um, kind of see places that she visits and everything and I think when we were reading this book we were we'd, we had been on the road a lot and we were um I was just pregnant with Molly that was it and <laughs> we we were just about to move to Scotland and we thought things would change like we wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be playing maybe as much and to be honest not that much changed um really but I think we could we could um, identify with that life on the road quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'll just play the song. It's called Wagons and Wheels. Passengers on this journey's long and welcome to the show. A home from home with sticks and stones, who knows what's in these bones? Leaving a life of static strife, there's no one left. Blue dresses are better when twirled and flattered with riches in the air. Wagons and wheels, old friends, new deals, winter or spring, I am hiding. Roads I see you, but towns I see. Winter or spring, I'll be traveling. Who are but who are you to shout in decency and shame? Shocking, I shock so. Settling down, might lose the 
crowd but I'm ready for a change wagons and wheels old friends new deals winter or spring I am hiding roads I see you but towns I see few winter or spring be next winter or spring i know re <laughs> reminiscing about traveling I was thinking julia is like she's self i spent her life self-isolating yeah way. i know did you notice that i remembered the chord oh you did yeah. ben spent all afternoon <laughs> trying to remember the chord and thought he Wait might for it oh i've forgotten it now yeah <laughs> you yeah. said you'd remember it in the gig <laughs> i know <laughs> oh brilliant Ooh. that's the closest i get to a lead guitar solo as well just for, yeah. That's You've better. got a couple tonight. Oh, I. Yeah. Look out for the guitar solos. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't, I've never have done guitar solos. Can't do it. So uh, this evening we are drinking beetroot tea. Oh, yeah. Beetroot, what was it? Booster? Uh, upbeat. Upbeat. Energy, mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So. And with that in mind, it's to our second, uh, get the bells out. Oh. oh, no, bells are here. Maybe drums. Drum roll for the second lockdown uh, <laughs> book. <laughs> wow, eight weeks. This is soaring production. This is great. Uh, our Not second. That. Is it nine? Eight or nine? Uh, this is eight. Oh, it's eight. Eight, okay. eight of ours. Though. Uh, it's Kate Moss's The Mistletoe Bride, which is a collection of short stories, short ghostly stories. Um, uh, kind of inspire rewritings of uh, she lives in France English and French um, ghost stories and the title uh, of the book gives away one of the stories in there which is the mistletoe bride which is actually repeated twice with two completely different tellings in the book which I think is quite unusual um, and the mistletoe bride is it's Christmas time and imagine imagine uh, and uh She's just got married and all the party guests are there and they're having dinner and it sort of flags a little bit and so they decide to play a game of hide and seek, which as it happens is one of Molly's favourite games uh, of the last eight weeks. Um, and um, and the bride goes off to hide. Um, they will, everyone, you know, and they will run around trying to find her and they can't find her and they never do. And... Um, it turns out. Well, I won't spoil the song for you because the song gives away where she, where she ended up. But it's um, it's a horribly tragic, um, tale. Um, so we did kind of like a sort of Christmassy, funny song for it. Um, uh, I think of it as funny. Is it funny? It's got a, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, so got, should we just have a quick look at who we've got? Oh yeah, uh, Jamie O'Brien. Hi. Hello. Uh, Marie Shipley, Carl, well, my, uh, my glasses got stolen by a crab this week, so I can't actually read them. But he did say stolen by a crab. I, I did, I, yeah. I li they literally got stolen away. by a crab. Uh, Barbara Byatt, hello from sunny Snowdonia. Hi, this is great. We get to travel from our own home. This is wonderful. Um, uh, Judith Hooper, hi from in Oxford. Lovely to see you all family. Right, okay, so Christmas, we're going to transport you to Christmas time. Hello, Starling. Oh, Starling's yeah. out Starlings the window. Out the, nice. Okay, um, how do we go? Okay, okay, ready? Here we go. The Mistletoe Bride in Song, inspired by Kate Moss's retelling. First we 
mask is underneath the mistletoe. Let's hide away in this old house. We'll count one hundred, then we'll find you Before you reach your number I find a chest of timber A perfect place to linger quietly And as I put my head down You'll never I'm still waiting for you to find me I must be very good at hiding I think it's a funny song about something tragic. Um, I was thinking about all those people that must have had weddings cancelled or delayed during this time. I can't imagine how that must have been. Um, well, at least he didn't get locked in a ca casket. So that's one positive. Um, in, in other Christmassy news, um, we haven't really mentioned this before, but um, we, uh, we've actually been commissioned, asked to do the music for Ardman Animation's um, Christmas special, which is very exciting. Um, indeed, um, it's a half hour. It would have. Um, I, um, I, it's going to be Christmas. Who knows which Christmas? Maybe this one. Maybe the next one. Who knows? Um, but we are having great fun uh, writing Christmas music, um, and I even put on my Christmas jumper one day when we did it. It was very hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's great that there's, that's another thing that we can do while we're at home is yeah. to write music and. We've been doing a fair bit of that. Um, so, yeah, but Ben was just saying the other day, um, we do, there's there's a lot of admin involved with being a musician, as lots of you will know. Um, and you end up having to wear lots of different hats, and one of those hats is booking gigs. And Ben does a lot of booking for the bookshop band. But actually, we we haven't had to do any booking, and, and one that's one, being one good thing is that we've actually had a bit more room for creativity because we mm. haven't had so much um, admin to keep up with or feel like we have to keep up with. So mm. it's, it's been quite... Yeah, it's been interesting, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So, Beth, <laughs> what is our third lockdown book recommendation? Next one is... Well, this one came about because we were about to reach... Sorry, sorry, Ben. <laughs> sorry. I was ruining the, the moment. Uh... We were, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> it's The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And we were about to approach writing our 100th song. Our, I think it was our 99th and 100th song. And we wanted to do something to kind of mark that. And um, we were asking people what might be a good book to do. And we asked Mr. Bees um, at the time as well what we, what we should, what would be kind of a good one to do. And we hadn't done m many young adult books mainly because Mr. B's events tended to be um, contemporary adult fiction, um, with a few exceptions. So I think it was quite nice for us to delve into something a bit different um, and a nice, e easy read, I suppose, but also a book that made me laugh and made me cry. Um, and since, obviously, had the film come out. And I think if you if you look on YouTube, there's quite a lot of song songs that have been written inspired by the fault in our stars so that's nice nice to have music um coming out and it's about two teenagers hazel and gus um and a few of their friends that meet at a teenage cancer support group 
and they find they have something in common with this love, a love of a book. Um, well, one of them likes his book and shows the other one and they, they, what they, they really want to know what happens when the book finishes and they want to meet the author so that they can ask him, like, what, why is it finished here? We want to know what happens to the, the characters, which quite often we feel when we end, finish reading a book. And so they kind of make, have bond, they bond over this and they're able to um, kind of share their feelings and they have a little text conversation between them and there's a few more um, teenagers in the book that, that are their friends and they, they have other text conversations. So that kind of makes it into the song, I suppose. And the title is based on that, which is I Say OK. <clears throat> it's another, another one we haven't done for ages. <laughs> I rely on you You know you can get there if you really want to You're working hard but you don't need to It's the worry in the mind And I didn't think we would travel together I knew we wouldn't last forever I didn't think you would find me clever You're so full of your metaphors have our always eyes there always you, you say okay I say okay texting you from the quiet of my room excited to see your name on my phone a special place away from the gloom don't want to be there alone I thought I might explode and ruin the beauty that could be our doing So why not make the most of this We last forever in this kiss We'll have our always Is there always you say okay I say okay Play that again. Guitar solo from Ben, please. <laughs> slide guitar. I don't do slide guitar either. This is just a, a gig of guitar solos that I don't do. <laughs> and this is a guitar part I don't do for the next one. Well, yeah. It's very... <laughs> it's good to see you as it is. Oh, yeah. Joan, Joan. Janet. Scott. Hello, everybody. Winter or spring, I hope to travel again. Exactly. Thanks, uh, Laura. Hiker and Hugh. Hello. Aww. Lots of lots of you. Thank you so much. It's really great to know that you're out there. It's really lovely. Helps us travel. Um, we do have a tip jar. Ta-da! We always have a tip jar. Um, and we always give 20% to help musicians and the book trade charity. Um, and so far we've given over £300 to each of those. So um, I say we, actually you. So well done and thank you. Um, and it's allowed us to earn something as well, which is really, really great. Um, um, we do have some links. There's a link for the tip jar link up there. It's a PayPal link. Um, and we also have um, our final five American uh, tour tea shells. The amazing, as yet undesi undesigned, but going to be amazing lockdown. Undesired. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get chastised by my bad selling technique, uh, but the lockdown tea towel, uh, there's a link for that too. Um, we'll we'll make a bunch of those. Um, um, we'll just get the pre-orders in, and then we'll we'll send off the, uh, the 
order. Um, and um, also a live in American bookshops album, which um, we're just chatting about the best way to release that. Um, but you can pre-order that on the link too. And if you have all those things or have ordered all those things, you... I also have some other things <laughs> you can I've got an album um, 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 under the name of Marshes and uh, it came out last year and with my band who are mostly based in Bath and so yeah if you have all that stuff you can buy some Marshes merchandise <laughs> um, the link isn't actually there because I forgot to put it up but I will put it up the moment we finish the gig. So I'll put up the links to Beth's or just, just find Marshes. You can search, you can find yeah. it on, on Bandcamp. Or... Yeah. There is also a heavy metal band called Marshes, but you'll tell by the cover that that's not that one. Yeah, you'll probably yeah. Be, be able yeah. to see. Yeah. 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 Um, so so in with a, a link to the next song, um, Ben thought it would be nice if I played a song that I wrote about what about a week and a half before lockdown and um i may have talked about our one hour song club before but i set up this one hour song club <laughs> where you have to write a song in an hour which we do quite frequently with the bookshop band but it was quite nice to um do it outside the bookshop band as well so this is a song that came out and yeah i'll just play it i think it's called encourage the young to love it's very very new <laughs> You can do the extended intro. I can do, yeah. Yeah. And I should say, I don't know what I'm playing, and I'll, if I start playing wrong notes, I'll just go quiet. But There's a glow outside in the sky. We won't go outside for a while till it. at its best Say the birds Still building nests And the words are uttered inside the 
There's a distant cry from a friend. We can hold on tight till the end with everything. <laughs> thank you for letting me do that oh, it was lovely <laughs> i saw it um when we first started lockdown about a week in there was a really funny um funny uh, cartoon someone had posted up on their facebook which said it had a musician with a guitar and the caption was yes i'd really love to hear your song about the lock the coronavirus um and yeah it was quite funny i guess that's what everyone doing but but they're beautiful that was beautiful <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God, I'm really good at telling a joke, aren't I? Right. So, we are going to move on to our fourth lockdown book recommendation. Um, and uh, knee slaps. Oh. It is Andrew Miller's Pure, um, which is an absolutely beautiful, fantastic book set in the late 18th century um, and set in Paris just before the French Revolution. And um, the main character is a, is a young engineer who's just sort of newly qualified and he gets a commission from the king to go to Paris. He's very excited, but then he learns that the commission is to clear the cemetery in the middle of Paris which is overflowing Les Innocents and so that Paris can grow and become a sort of a modern city at that time and it just couldn't do that with this pile of bodies in the middle um, and so he he kind of throws himself at this job desperate to prove himself as a engineer and as a young professional person in Paris and he has this wonderful pea green suit that you can sort of see on the on the um the front cover and he gets in he goes to all the parties and all the fashion and um but ultimately he's doing this really gross job which is emptying out this cemetery and demolishing the church and um and it sort of obviously takes its toll and you wonder if at the end of as the story goes on whether it's going to make him or break him as a man all these bones coming out and um, obviously that's where the, the cascombs are now in Paris which featured in Robert McFarlane's book again taking us underground into those same catacombs that they created uh, in uh, demolishing the cemetery at Les Innocents and we went there when we Poppy, I and Beth went to touring in Shakespeare and Co. We made a sort of pilgrimage to to the monument that you can find there where Les Innocents used to be um, which is very nice and clean and he obviously did a really good job in the end um, but anyway that's the song we're going to sing um, and it's called How Many Bones to Build a Man or in brackets The Downfall of Les Innocents the line. 
to make the man in old Versailles But I will never clear a thing if I were to fall in Clear the graves to make a way And all who work will be repaid With money left for purpose by the king from the soil before the air begins to spoil the future will come here in the end the city has no place for bones beside the market halls and homes it's by the church that we have piled them It's one of my favourite books of that year. 
Um, and it's just so like you, it's one of those books that ignites all your visceral senses when you're reading, which obviously you're reading and you don't expect like to your senses to be like physically affected. But we could could definitely taste things in that book and smell things in that book, and it was yeah extraordinary. I think you found that. We both it was my it was my mum particularly really found that mm. she felt really like she when we talked about the book she would feel that like <laughs> horrible taste in her mouth and the, yeah. of smells and everything yeah but in a good way obviously like you know he's a good writer he's a great, writer. <laughs> he's a great guy he's a lovely yeah. guy I think I once saw him in the Royal Oak in a pea green suit in Bath it's a local um, uh, pub well, not local to us now but um, a fantastic pub in Bath and uh, he was there dressed in a marvellous maybe not the one from the book but it was pretty cool so are we on to our last I think we are last it song of... seemed to go so quickly doesn't I it know. Um, well, let's just see who's here Nicole Jones hello um, oh, thanks thanks Matt for my uh, comment on the slide yep that's the only song that I play slide actually no there's one other one I'm Dust which maybe we'll do one day but it's very hard um Oh, thank you. Thank you for all your comments as well. Like, do do share the video. Oh, and we put all the videos up on YouTube as well. So if you know anyone who's not on Facebook or hasn't managed to catch these or you want to just sit down and binge watch them all, <laughs> do you want to do that? Um, they're all on YouTube now, um, except for this one, which I'll put up later. It's very, wa it's very warm here tonight. <laughs> very hot. We're in, we're in the attic, um, kind of in the top of our house, and the rest of the house is, doesn't get warm really but no. this, these top rooms they'll be freezing in the winter I imagine yeah. but they're yeah. really uh, yeah definitely very warm but if we had the windows open you'd probably hear <laughs> more of the birds than you would of us which yeah. maybe is nice yeah. we had them open until we started um, mm. there's a lot of swallows out there right it's now really cool yeah kind of have that slight kind of sh almost shrieking cry which is lovely it's really yeah. lovely do do send in lots of you have been sending in photos of of like where you are watching it and it's so nice um to see that we off as soon as the concert finishes we stop and read everything and it's really it's really it's like unusually nice to see people in their own context especially when you've just been stuck in your own for so long yeah um, so that's really nice thanks yeah. for sending those in yeah so i hope you're all having having an okay time and uh, perhaps you're managing to meet up with a couple of people here and there, um, which hopefully is it's really nice. We uh, we're now going to sing a song about the Arctic. You know, <laughs> well, relevant that Christmas might, Arctic. Might cool us down. Yeah. Um, so a few years ago, we um, were asked. We did an event at Mr B's, as we did a lot, and we read a book by Michelle Paver, who I think writes quite a lot for children. Um, I haven't actually read anything else by her, but. She wrote this book called Dark Matter, and oh, it's a good place. Can you see that? That's good. Is that okay? Yeah. And um, it's it's a ghost story, and I I mean I, I think it's aimed at adults more than children, um, partly because it's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> when I first when I read it, I I just moved to a place that felt like in the middle of nowhere, and I was in the house on my own, this little cottage. And I, I basically couldn't finish the book because I was too scared to read on, which um, is always a sign of a good ghost story. I don't read a lot of ghost stories. My, I'm too too weak. <laughs> <laughs> My mind's too weak. Um, but but it, I, I, yeah, like I said, it was it was kind of a sign of a good ghost story. And uh, it's about these lads, um, some probably in the 1930s, I think it is, who there's a, there's a haven't talked about it for a while, so I'll probably stumble over it a bit. But there's a guy who is may maybe is a young guy, a bit of a loss at what to do next in his life. Um, he's he's not really got the kind of career in mind, perhaps. But he ends up being drawn in um, by some maps, and he gets told about this expedition to the Arctic, and he decides to sign up for it, and he goes on it, and so they sail out on this boat. And he meets up, there's a, some other guys that he's never met before, but they all kind of start bonding and um, and they get out. And they, they end up having to stop on this part of the Arctic. I don't think they're meant to, I can't quite remember 
the exact story, but they all stay in this little hut anyway. And but they they kind of get stuck there and they they can't move off it for a bit off this particular part. Um, and they also get warned. That's it. They get warned not to stop at that point, but they do, and they don't know why they're warned about it. But they um, they you know they're young and foolish. They decide to go there anyway against adv- any advice. But they soon start to realise that there's some weird things happening and every day in the morning and the evening I guess or maybe two or three times a day they have to go and check the expedition equipment and these weird happenings have just started going on and one this guy Jack is just going up to check the expedition equipment and he has to do the morse code and send stuff back and he gets lost in a blizzard on the way back and he just can't find his way home and he says to himself steady on old chap um, in the middle of the Arctic, as you would, <laughs> and um, and that for some reason that really stood out to me. So the song is called "Steady On," um, but it it's it's a really bleak, as you can imagine, kind of bleak scene and spooky and um, yeah, all those things that make you go whoo. So this is the song called "Steady On." Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> oh, it's nice to play that one really again. I've played for ages. Well, thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Um, um, we do have the tip jar if you're able and willing and feel under no obligation. Um, and there's other merchandise things. Yes, Tim Porter has put up the Marshes link to Beth's album. Oh, thanks, Dad. Um, uh, so grab that. Um, it's on vinyl and CD and it digital is. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we should say as well, Dad is putting on um, in association with the Cotswold Distillery um, some gigs, gigs every Thursday night. So if you want some more music on a different evening if your evenings aren't already full up um there are different artists from kind of all around the world um mm -hmm. that are, have been booked to do that as well so yeah and also on wednesdays that's at 8 30 on thursday mm -hmm. and wednesdays at 7 30 adrian will put me right if i'm wrong um wigtown book festival are doing a regular wednesday wednesday evening book event of various things all sorts of different different uh um sorts of events from literary pub quizzes not in a pub to talks with authors and everything like that so there's a lot going on online um so do look it out um and if you want to i'll put up the so all the books again just to recap um and you can get these from your local independent bookshop or if you can't um hive.co.uk um, is a way of purchasing a book and you nominate a bookshop of your choice to receive that bookshop's commission for that uh, sale so that's a really good way of supporting a bookshop who maybe has had to shut its doors um, or not even provide an online service so do look out that um, hashtag save any bookstores hashtag choose bookshop send them your love and um, yeah so the books we did this week were we did by carol birch orphans of the carnival and then we did the mistletoe bride by kate moss and then we did the fault in our stars by john green followed by Andrew Miller's Pure. And then we just finished off with Dark Matter by Michelle Paver. Um, so we will be here again next week. Um, have a wonderful weekend um, seeing, hopefully, friends at a distance and family who you may be haven't seen for a while. So that's going to be rather wonderful, I think. Um, and thank you to all the bookshops and literary festivals and the Books in My Bag and the Booksellers Association uh, for also hosting this concert. Um, lots of love to all you guys. Um, and um, yeah, we'll dive into your comments and uh, get a glass of something or other. Starling's still there. Oh, that's good. Not one Starling. <laughs> there's always, oh no, there's another one. Oh, great. It's looking the wrong way though. That, oh, well. We've got our faithful, old faithful. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Until next week.